Yeah, buzzing. Um, obviously, last season I got a little taste of of uh, Conference League football. Um, it was a big part of me coming to Rangers was the European football, and uh, tomorrow I can't wait to to get out in the pitch and show what we can do. Um, yeah, you take a lot in as a young player. You're always learning. Um, a lot of experiences, the ups and downs. Um, and yeah, no experiences that I'll take forever in my career. And it's just a start. Tomorrow's another opportunity um, for us as a club to go and get three points. And um, yeah, I can't wait to get going. As you say, Connor, it's, it's just the start. But I mean, it's been quite a start for you. You obviously hit the ground running since you came to Rangers. Your performance has been rewarded at international level. And now you're, you're looking forward to your first campaign in the Europa League do you feel as if you can go to the next level in terms of you know you think there's more to come this season from you personally yeah definitely as I said it's just the start um it's about us as a team as well and I can see us as a team growing and building each week and um, we're nowhere near the finished article yet but we're doing great so far and we just need to keep building in the same same direction now and keep pushing and tomorrow's another opportunity for that in the European stage has it gone better than you could have hoped for, better than you expected in terms of just your performances with Rangers and obviously the, the, the Scotland recognition that came on the back of that? Look, I'm one just to take it each game as it comes, you know. Um, I don't think too far ahead and, and just kind of play my football, enjoy it and make sure I'm learning on the job as well. So, yeah, as I said, I just take it each game as it comes and, and that's how I've been working. That's how I'll continue. When the last time we spoke to you, you were just about to, you were asking about getting called up to Scotland and obviously... You did get that a couple of weeks later. And in terms of being in there and getting to train with the guys like Billy Gilmore and Scott McTominay, guys that have been played at the highest level and playing the same position as you, how, how beneficial was that for you to have getting and see an up close sort of insight to the sort of standards that you have to hit if you want to be one of these top midfielders for, for Scotland and for Rangers? Yeah, it's obviously, it was an honour to get to get the call up. Um, and yeah, it was great to go in there and see how these these players at the top level are are working week in and week out. But I felt at home in training. And I felt I felt comfortable. And as I said, it's just picking up these little things and constantly learning. That's all you can do. And um, yeah, hopefully it comes again. Connor, looking at the the new format of the Europa League, what's achievable for Rangers this season in the competition? Um, again, yeah, we don't want to think too far ahead. We want to take each game as it comes. Tomorrow's our first opportunity. Um, tomorrow's a start, so we'll go out there fresh and. And hopefully, yeah, we can start start with the win. In terms of realistic, though, the mentality in the dressing room is we're here to progress to the knockout stages. One hundred percent, yeah, that that's what we are at Rangers Football Club. We we want to win every game we play, and that doesn't change no matter what competition it is. We're we're here for, we're here to win. Co Sorry, Connor. Josh, do you want to just make it one more for Connor? We'll yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. J just maybe Connor specifically on the position the manager's spoken about giving you responsibility. You've played as a number six before. Can you tell us a bit about? what that process has been like for you, the responsibility as a number six and, and how you feel you've progressed in that don't, role over the last Don't say too much. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a, bit, a bit would be nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I've loved it since I've came in. I think, um, I think I've said that many times and the gaffer's been brilliant with me, the staff have been brilliant with me and the boys have all been brilliant with me. So, um, yeah, it's, I've been comfortable um, and playing in that position. As I said, I, I'll keep learning, but I've enjoyed it so far. And, um, yeah, as I said, there's a lot more to come for me. I'm still learning as well and... I'm taking everything in that I'm getting told and watching games back and making sure that I'm making myself better at the same time as as well as the team. So, um, yeah, that's all I can do and, and I've loved it so far, like I've said. If Philippe, then, how, how's the squad looking ahead of the game tomorrow? Um, OK, so we, we lost one player with Oscar in the in the training this week. So, in a tackle, he get a bad knock and he will be out for several weeks. So, that's a disappointing thing. Uh, because he was growing back to his best level and uh, and showing the player that he was or that he is and that he will be in the future. Um, the rest of the squad stays the same uh, as last weekend. Just on Oscar, how frustrating is that? Because he's he's not been able... And is there a concern there? Is there something behind these injuries? Or just no, it's 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 duels. It's football. It's part, it's part of football. And uh, you have lucky lucky moments and you have unlucky moments. This was an unlucky one. Also not uh, a crazy tackle, but you have duels in football and, and then things can happen. And he's been uh, really unlucky these last couple of months with those things. I hope all the bad luck for him stops now after this and the rest of your career uh, will be the luck side. But it's, it's part of football. How do you look ahead to the 
prospect to face in Malmo and how do you see them as an opponent? No, it's a, it's a very interesting game. So I I saw the stats also from Rangers uh, the last couple of years against Malmo. So that's not really good. So we have a fight with history in that way. Uh, it's interesting to do that. Uh, the team is very motivated to show a good face tomorrow and to grow again like they've been growing the last couple of weeks to make the next step. We need to find some solutions, of course, because of the suspension of Jefte uh, and also because uh, Ritvan Yilmaz is not available yet. So that uh, that will change some things that we didn't have much time to train on, but that we did the last couple of days. And it's about going full in this game against uh, a good opponent, very good opponent who play good offensive football who are top of the league, who have a lot of experience in Europe with uh, with a lot of players. So everybody's excited uh, to play this game. Philippe, you, you said there that it's like a fight with history because of Rangers' record against Malmo. Mm -hmm. is, is that something that you speak about? Because when we're looking at the game from three years ago, obviously you weren't here. I think it's only uh, the captain that was, that was playing that night. So is that something you talk about with your team? No, no. It's more for you guys because you guys like these things. Yeah. So I want to give you also some things. But probably you knew already. Uh, no, because in the end, I don't believe in that also. It's, it's something new now. So it's not the same players. It's not the same manager. It's not the same opponents. It's a new game. It's a new game of football. And of course, we analyzed Malmö really well. That's also an interesting thing now. Um, as a staff with this new formula in, uh, in the Europa League or in the Champions League, the same. So before you had a group stage with, with four teams, so you have three opponents. So you analyze them three times and then you have the, your game that you can analyze to show the players for the next game. Now it will be eight times analyzing a totally different team. So it's, uh, it's a lot of more work to do. But it's also more challenges, and I think it's interesting for everybody. Just in terms of the new format, do you feel that you're in? You're confident you're in a position where you can improve on last year's showing in the Europa League. I know you're not going to give us a, a target for the overall competition, but you know how do, do you feel. To do it better as last year, you yeah. mean? I yeah. think we were really close against Benfica, mm -hmm. and we did a really good um, Europa League season last year with uh, the qualities we had as a group. And if you compare the qualities that Benfica had, we were really close. Uh, we finished first in our group in Europa League, so you cannot do better than that. So it will be a challenge to do better, but we are, we are ambitious. We always want to do better than we did before. Every month we want to do better. And that's the exciting thing about the project now. We have a new squad. We have a lot of new young guys coming in, having the first taste for some in, uh, in European football, or some like Connor, who's also still young. He had already a taste last season, but he felt also our difficulties to combine it with domestic football and then winning the points every three days. So that was a problem last season in the team there. So it's, it's challenging for them and it's interesting for us to see how, how much, how fast they adapt to that to that every three day performance, every three day to be on the top of your toes and, and to, to play big games. Uh, and this is now the start of that period to come. Uh, there was an interview this week with John Gilligan. He spoke about the financial state of the club and he's optimistic that there'll be funds for you to spend in January. Just how encouraging, I was happy to hear that. <laughs> just how encouraging was that for you? After no, the it's, it's important and it's necessary. And, uh, uh, it was not easy in the summer. We talked about that. Maybe the people in the club will talk about that later on, the next couple of months also, uh, about that situation. So, of course, as a, as a manager, you hope to get uh, more funds in to, to, do, to do the right thing for the club. But with the resources that there were there, I think everybody starts to see that uh, a lot of good things have been made. And it's now interesting to work with that and to focus on that and then of course to plan towards Jan January what we are doing already and to to plan towards next summer we're also busy with that but uh, that's our job and with recruitment to do it's important to have also 
money to do the right things for the club, of course. John also spoke about wanting to take away some of the responsibility you've had to, to be a sort of spokesman for the club, a, 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 a leading figure for the club in terms of explaining what's going on behind the scenes. With him now on board and taking on some of that onus, does that feel like, like it's a bit like a load off your shoulders in a sense? Uh, I, I don't really need that. But of course, as a manager, you want to talk about football and about the things you are doing and not and we had too many talks last couple of months about extra sportive things where i didn't have any single influence in or any single talking so i hope we can stop this spirit also and, and nobody needs to talk about those things anymore in the future and that we can focus on football because that stays the most important for the club yes uh you were the coach of isaac isatelin Yes, back in 2017. Indeed, yes. Yeah, what do you remember from him and how was he back then? Um, I took him on loan after the club sold my striker after three, the, three first games of the season. Uh, Isaac came from Anderlecht on loan um, and he did a really good job. I liked him really much as a player, but also as a person. He's a, he's a great person, he's a great team player. He works really hard. He scored a lot of goals with me also. So it was really important uh, uh, that season to, to get really good results and, and to grow with that team above the level that they had before. What do you say to your players about him I, ahead uh, of tomorrow's game? I know him well, so I know his, his strong points. I will talk about that. We've done already, like we do with every player. There's no difference in that. In these days, you, you can see so many games, you can go so deep in analyze because you have also a team of analysts in your club. So in that way, it's not a big difference with knowing a player from before or seeing him on a video. So that's not a big difference. But you talk about weaknesses also, I think, not only strong. Of course, but every player has his uh, strong points and his weaknesses. Otherwise, they would not play in, uh, in Malmö or in Rangers, but in, uh, in much bigger teams. We can get the mic to Callum. We'll make this the last question. Yeah. Oh. yeah. There we go. Yeah, Philip. Just with regards to the new format for the Europa League, do you feel as though that makes it harder to to reach the knockout stages, or is that still a realistic prospect for Rangers? Because it has been something the club has achieved consistently over the past few years. Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting to see. I think with the draw, we didn't get any presents. That's really clear if you compare with other groups. So we have a really, really tough group to qualify out of. So that's a little bit the strange thing also about that. Eh? You have teams in your group who, who play against other teams than you are playing against. So in that way, it's, it's, a, little bit, uh, it's a little bit a weird situation. But we're going to just focus on ourselves game by game, going full to take the three points and then see what this format brings. Finally. I know this is something you probably won't want to speak too much about, but there have been some reports in Belgium over the past couple of days speaking about you oh. about the possibility of the uh, If you ask me this, I want to speak about that, yes. You it's very really clear. I engaged myself long term for Rangers last month. Uh, whatever, whoever comes, whatever team comes, I'm not going to go away. So really clear. I want uh, this project with, with the club. To, to make it really successful for the future. And we all know we need time for that. We need a few transfer windows for that. We need a lot of work to do for that. And that's what I want to do because I, I love the city. I love the club. I love the dynamic at Ibrox with the fans. So I'm here to stay, very clear. Thank you, everyone.